Hi guys, thank you for clicking on this video. My name's Aisha and this is Aisha Leanne Talks. So as I predicted, there is an update in the Gary Glitter situation. It seems that he'd be going back to prison for breaching his license conditions. This means that he could end up going back to prison and serving the rest of his sentence. Obviously he had a 16 year sentence, he's done eight years. That means if he goes back into prison, he's gonna have to possibly serve the, le the last eight years of his sentence. The reason for all of this is a recording that has surfaced, which implies that Gary Glitter has been trying to access the dark web. Now I'm not gonna lie, I'm not sure if everybody is gonna agree with my opinions on this matter, but stick around to the end if you wanna know what my thoughts are. I've already done a video detailing Gary Glitter's life, his crimes, and how he got to where he is now. So if you wanna watch that video, go ahead, go back and watch that, that's on my channel. But this video is mostly gonna be focusing on what's happened since he's been released from prison. I will give you a quick brief recap just in case, but I'm sure that most of you already know, Gary Glitter is a disgraced glam rock star whose real name is Paul Gad. He was arrested and sent to prison in 2015. He received 16 years for the sex crimes against children aged 10 to 15. This wasn't his only conviction. He had been convicted previously for child pornography crimes and other sex offence crimes against children in Vietnam as well. So because of the way that the UK justice system works on the 3rd of February, 2023, this year, he was released from prison after serving eight years of his 16 year sentence that he received back in 2015. Upon his release, he was subjected to license conditions, which included, he was to spend three months in a bell hostel. He was fitted with a GPS tracker. He was given a nightly curfew. He faced restrictions on internet use and his phone could be remotely monitored at any point. He was also obviously banned from being around any schools, playgrounds or swimming pools. Although the reports that I've been seeing and a lot of the newspaper articles have said that he is in quite close proximity to schools or playgrounds and things like this and that's one of the reasons why people have been, you know, quite unhappy about where he's been placed. Now, a Ministry of Justice spokesperson said, Sex offenders are closely monitored by the police and the probation service. They face some of the strictest license, including restrictions on internet use. If an offender breaches this conditions, they can be recalled back to prison. The day after Gary's release, the police were called to his bail address because people were protesting outside. One person even tried to scale the fence to get in. But then the police released a statement to say that no arrests has been made and that the situa situation had been resolved. Since then, nothing's really been seen or heard. It's been pretty quiet up until now. Gary's been filmed using a smartphone by another convict at his bail hostel talking about how to access the dark web. We will get to the conversation in a moment, but for those of you that don't know, the dark web is a section of the internet that can't be accessed using your normal browsers like Google, Yahoo, you know, Mozilla, Follow Firefox, whatever. Instead, it can only be accessed by like specialist browsers, most of which end with a dot onion URL. The websites that you can find on the dark web are things like marketplaces to buy illegal items, illicit substances, you know, things like this. You get pages that are promoting violence and most concerningly in Gary Glitter's case, you can find access to child pornography. The recording was only quite short, but the conversation, it went like this. Gary says, shall I get rid of this duck duck? An unknown person responds, yeah, I wouldn't bother using that if I were you. Gary then asks, so what do I do next then? Let's try to find this onion, one step at a time. Now it's thought that Gary is referring to a search engine called DuckDuckGo, which is used to protect the user's privacy. 
and as I just said about the onion URL, onion would be referring to the dark web. It's also believed that Gary has a girlfriend in Cuba that he's been trying to contact using WhatsApp. Former detective Michael Haynes, who set up the Metropolitan Police's paedophile unit said, this is extremely disturbing and shows that he is attempting to access material that he should not be accessing. People use the dark web for nefarious reasons. Why else would you want to be there? Onion is a slang phrase for the dark web. The Deputy Prime Minister, Dominic Raab, has now taken a personal interest in the case, as he probably should. He claims that the pictures and the comments are more than enough to raise concerns. The former Home Secretary, Priti Patel, said that if he is breaching his license conditions, then he should go back to prison. This is very shocking and it makes you feel sick. A probation spokesperson said, protecting the public is our number one priority. That's why we set such tough conditions. And when offenders breach them, we don't hesitate to return them back to custody. There's also something else that's getting people quite infuriated. So as we already know, Gary's been sitting behind bars, collecting royalties. He's said to be worth over eight million pounds. A lot of that money is said to be hidden abroad, tied up in a company in Anguilla. So why did he receive 54,000 pounds? Yeah, 54,000 pounds in legal aid for the child abuse trial back in, 19, in 2015. Yeah, why? He is sitting on a fortune. And so many people agree that it is a disgrace. That is over double the £21,000 that was first thought to have been basically given to him for the trial, which I don't think he should have got any of that, but hey ho. And it's appalling. And people are saying, you know, we have every right to be outraged. Now, my opinion, which I'm not sure everybody will agree with, and if you don't agree with me, then that's okay. But firstly, yes, the dark web can be used to access child pornography, which is what most people are very concerned about with the idea of him accessing the dark web. But the dark web can also be used to access other websites like, you know, purchasing illicit substances, purchasing illegal items, but also to purchase forged documents. Now, I'm of the opinion that he could be seeking forged documents. I mean, considering the the hate he's receiving at the moment, you know, they want him out of where he is, you know, he's not, he's not exactly a very popular person right now, well, he is popular, but hated on, you know, I'm not surprised, I wouldn't be surprised if he wants to leave the country. And that could be why he is trying to access the dark web to obtain documents so that he can flee the country. I could be wrong, but that is something to consider. But whatever he is trying to access the dark web for, it is a breach of his license conditions and he should be sent back to prison. If he's actually accessed the dark web or attempted to access the dark web, which realistically that cannot be proven unless you know they have evidence and as it stands there isn't really much concrete evidence as much as i do believe that he is a disgrace to humanity and that he should spend the rest of his life in prison i do not believe that a video of a conversation is enough evidence to actually convict somebody. Now, if they find evidence on his phone that proves that he has tried to access the dark web, then yes, that's a breach of his license conditions, he should be sent to prison. But if they don't, then a conversation is only circumstantial evidence and it shouldn't be used, or theoretically wouldn't be used, to send somebody back to prison. 
Now, let's please keep it respectful in the comments, but I would like to know your thoughts and your opinions on this one, because I'm pretty sure that this is gonna spark some conspiracies, and I'd be very interested to know what all you guys' thoughts are. But other than that, thank you for watching this video. If you're new and you don't know what I do here, I tell hardship stories. So I tell celebrity stories, I tell everyday people stories, and I tell stories that I find in the news. If that's something that you are interested in, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. It is a free and easy way that you can support this channel. And until next time, remember to look after yourselves and be kind to everybody around you because you never know what someone else might be going through and a little bit of kindness and compassion can go a long way. Bye bye for now.